Hello, my front end friends. One of the most common design patterns ever is the container or the wrapper. And what if I told you though, there might be a way to not have to have one, which could be really amazing for me anyway, because I am amazing at setting it up at the first section where I have, you know, this this no more containers section uh, is, is, is in one. Uh, and then I forget to do it after that. Uh, but not only that, like you, we have this extra div and stuff that's coming in that I'm not always, it's just an extra layer of divs that we don't need necessarily. But you know, then we have this next section. I needed a section, so it has to be full width. So I had to close that wrapper and then I come down and div div class is my wrapper again. And I know there's ways of shortcutting this a little faster, but then we set that up. So then, okay, this one is done. And then I have to do another one here and so on and so forth. And we have them all over the place. And again, you might have it as a wrapper. You might have it as a container. Uh, but what, what if I said we didn't actually need them at all? <laughs> um, and just as an example, let's delete all the ones that I have. Hit save and every, everything is too wide. And I just made a small change here so you can see everything is, is all wrapped in, in something. Uh, and I'm going to show you sort of what the end result will be before we, we explore how I can do it. So let's say this section here, uh, which is my BG primary on it. If I want that to be full width, I could just come in and say that I want that to be full width. And magically it is. And it, and it just works and that's great. And of course this would work in other stuff. Say I had an image that I want to be full width. I could come down here and say that that's full width and hit save and, and it's going to come and look at that. It's, it's full width as well. Or what if I didn't want that to be full width, but I wanted it to just be a little bit wider because right now it's like stretching from edge to edge. And maybe I don't want that. I want it to be like breakout and I only want it to be wider than the regular content, but I don't want it to be the full full width or you could even do that with content. Let's come on this paragraph. And I'm going to do a call to action just to change the background color and give it a little bit of padding. And let's add the breakout on that one as well. And look at that. It breaks out of the regular flow of content. And we have sort of this, this wider piece that we can draw attention to or whatever we want. And we don't have to worry about containers or wrappers or anything like that. And going back in and wrapping content in our, you know, adding divs in and this is, imagine if you're using like a CMS like WordPress or something where you just go, oh, this thing that I've put in, I don't have to worry about wrapping stuff. I just say it's full width and it is full width or whatever it is. Um, it, I think could make life a lot easier. So let's explore how we can do all of this. And so to be able to do that, we're gonna be starting off with the site that has no containers or wrappers. And I've, I've gotten rid of the CSS that was controlling everything. So we just have everything going edge to edge uh, with nothing containing anything. Uh, and before I dive into this, I do want to say that I got this idea originally developed after reading this article on smallcss.dev by Stephanie Eccles, uh, which she was exploring this idea of having breakout containers in CSS. Um, and from here, I sort of got this idea that I started playing around with a lot more to, you know, if we can break out, why don't we have different layers and levels of stuff? Uh, and then I was really happy with this idea and then found out that Ryan Mulligan also um, had come up with this like a year ago. <laughs> so I, let's just say great minds think alike <laughs> on that one. Um, so I'll link to Ryan's article, uh, which is right here called Layout Breakouts with CSS Grid, uh, as well as Stephanie's article right here. Um, where they sort of are at different levels. Ryan's going to be a bit more developed, though he doesn't touch on one of the things that I'm going to be doing in this one, but he has sort of multiple levels compared to me where we're going to do a full width, a breakout, and then the regular content. So let's go and look at how we're going to set this up, which I'm going to come all the way to the top of my file, and I'm just going to create something called a content grid. And we're going to give this a display of grid, as would you would expect. And we're gonna really start simple and level our way up through this. So let's do a grid template columns of one FR, one FR, one FR. And I am assuming that you're familiar with grid to a certain extent for this video. Uh, so if you've never used grid, I would recommend there's a getting started with grid video that I'll put in the description. Maybe start with that one and then come back to this because you might get confused with things like FRs and I'm gonna be using min maxes and we're gonna get a little bit complicated <laughs> along the way here. Uh, but we have a three column grid and let's come over here and let's just go on my main for now and let's give this my content grid and hit save. And that's going to break everything because it's just throwing all the different things that were in my main into that grid that we just set up. So simple solution to this is, and this is sort of the backbone of this, what we've created here is that we're going to create named lines within our grid. And if you didn't know you can do this, you just come in between two. So we have a column, then this is like my line and then a column and then a line and then a column. And so here I'm gonna do content start. And I used to never like 
naming my lines until I found out about this. And then I found out that line names can do so much awesome stuff. And I wish I was using them for a lot longer than I have been. Uh, but it's better to be late to the, the party than never to get there at all. So I'll just put this on another line to make it more obvious. Um, when I save that, nothing's going to change. But if I go into my dev tools and in my dev tools here, we can turn on my grid. And we can see here, you can actually have a content start and a content end. And my head is probably on top of the content end, so let me get out of the way. Uh, so we have those two that are right there. And what's interesting with these is these actually make an implicit, like this, this area, this is actually a grid area now. We're not going to get into that. I have another video. I'm going to talk about how these lines make implicit areas, which m opens up doors that I didn't think of before. Uh, but what it also means is I can just come in and say content grid. And on my content grid, if we select all the direct children, I can say that their grid uh, grid column, instead of doing like a one over two and using those, I can just say that it's content and hit save. And everything starts at my content start and ends at my content end. And this is something that's really cool with this, like the, the naming convention here, start and end will make a content area. It's really neat. Uh, so there we go. We sort of made a pseudo container. Terrible one, but it's it's a container effectively <laughs> that we're going to do a lot more with. And this is really like the backbone of everything that we're going to build from here. The next thing that I want to do with this content grid, though, is let's first come in with a breakout area. So instead of a hundred or one FR for the two side columns, let's come in and say we're going to do a hundred pixels, one hundred pixels, and then let's just copy this from this side and put it over on this side. And people always tell me when I'm doing these things with long CSS lines that I can put word wrap on. I'm very aware. I just find it actually makes it much less readable than having it as a really long line, uh, especially for demos and stuff like this. So we have 100 pixels, 100 pixels, 1 FR, and then 100 pixels, 100 pixels. And we can clearly see that here. So that's cool. Hopefully we're all on the same page now. But what I want to do is actually name a few more of these lines. So let's come here and we're going to do a breakout start. And then we can copy that just to make it go a bit faster, come all the way here and do a breakout end. And now we are getting a little ridiculously long uh, with, <laughs> with this line of CSS. One of the things with grid I find that you don't get with any other CSS, like, well, clamps, I guess, and some of the, the number stuff, but like CSS is usually so short down the side. And then with grid, you get these super long lines sometimes, but it's worth it. Uh, so <laughs> we can set it up like that with a breakout start and breakout end. And that means if we're in my grid inspector, and if you're using the grid inspector and you don't see the line names coming up, since we are on that subject, when you do your grid toggle, and actually I'm using uh, Chrome right now, but Firefox's, it makes the names a little bit bigger if you want to see them. Uh, but you'll see here we have show track sizes, which we could actually turn off for this exercise. And we have the show area names and uh, show line names. So we can hide the labels, we can only do line numbers if we want, or we can show line names. So I have my breakout start, then my content start. And so it's 100. And then as long as we're putting these in between two of them, that line that's in between those two columns will get that name. So that's set up like that. So that means what we can do is let's duplicate this. But we're going to say that it's my dot breakout. And the grid column is my breakout. So just to see if this is working, let's go back to my HTML. And let's just choose this paragraph right here. I'm going to say class is equal to breakout and it breaks out of the container <laughs> nice and easy but that does not address things like this because this one we want it to be full width so this is what we're going to do for that one is you can actually name lines starting over here because if we turn my grid inspector on and it's annoying when i save sometimes you'll notice the color of my grid changes and the grid inspector turns off but we do have a line at the beginning and we do have a line all the way at the end so we can name those lines as well. So I'm going to say full width start. And then we're going to copy this and we're going to come all the way to the end and we're going to do a full width end over there. And I know it's I'm going side scrolling. The finished code for this is linked down below if you want to see that. Um, it might be a bit easier to follow along. But we have full width start on one end, full width end all the way on the other end. <laughs> and then we can come here and we can say content grid is if it's a full width, we have a grid column, you guessed it, of full width. <laughs> There's a bit more to this one though, because if we use this full width, and let's come here, full width. If we use the full width, it, it works, but we're, we're not containing our content. 
uh, which to me sort of ruins the point because usually, and this could even be like section or something else. Um, but to me, like if I'm doing this, I probably want my background to be full width, but I want to keep my content centered. I want to keep it within what would traditionally be the, the container that I have. So one solution to this, if you want, is you could leave everything exactly like this and you could just come on here and we could say that this is also a content grid. And then if we did that, it, it would work. No problem at all. It's gonna line everything up and everything will be hunky dory and should be fine. So if you like this solution and you, you know, maybe sometimes you want literally full width and then you get it. And then other times you want to have uh, the content grid in there just to make that work. And the advantage of bringing the content grid here, I guess, is then you could also come and say class breakout on the stuff that's in there. Um, and then that can break out as well. So we can use that within there. To me, when I was doing this though, and I didn't mind this so much, um, and my first thought was actually subgrid and I started using it. And then when I was like, well, people are gonna complain about browser support. What if I did a fallback? And then my fallback turned out that I didn't even need to worry about subgrid. Um, so we're not even gonna look at subgrid in this one, uh, but we have the full width. And for me, the easier thing to do is actually just to say that this is comma dot full width. And that would also mean that over here we have the comma and then dot full width and choose all the direct children of that. Uh, and we get the exact same thing. This is literally repeating myself a little bit, uh, right? Because we're setting up a content grid and a full width to be basically exactly the same thing. The only difference is we do want the full grid to pull ourselves back wide again. Uh, so you might not like this idea. You might like the idea of just redeclaring, you know, the content grid like I did. But I really like this idea <laughs> of just setting, you know, my full width is going to be the full size and then I'm setting that up as the same grid that it's also inside of, which is why I was originally thinking of subgrid, but then it turns out I didn't actually need it. Uh, so that was kind of cool that it works like this. Uh, the one thing we could do here is instead of selecting all the children, we could say uh, not and say not breakout uh, comma dot full width. And I should have done that on both at the same time, but it's not hard to copy paste. Um, it's gonna work exactly the same way, but here we're just not, so the star selector is a little bit of an expensive selector. Here we're being a little bit more specific that we're selecting. Eh, this is probably an expensive selector too, to be honest, but uh, we're being more explicit. We're saying, don't set these up for my full width or my breakout because they're getting their own grid column set up. Um, and yeah, I'd really like to know <laughs> what you think of this idea. And we're gonna explore a little bit more of the things you can do with it. Uh, but, you know, do you like this idea of having these be the same? Um, the other option here, actually, just so you know, and this is another way that I've done this, um, is I just had this one was also basically the same thing, display grid. And then I would just do my grid template columns are inherit. Um, and you'll notice that it's still working. So either one uh, works completely fine. The one thing that is important is you do need to like, you know, redeclare this line here um, to place everything on the content grid as well. So whether you wanted to use the inherit here or just have that same selector here, I think they're both perfectly fine. Um, and yeah, this is, this is where we can sort of start using this stuff, right? So here I have that call to action. I just do a breakout on there and it breaks out. Uh, and then I can come down and I have this image and that image can be my full width and it's going to be full width as soon as it loads in. There we go. Uh, and it just, everything works. Uh, the one problem with it is how I have it set up right now is it's very static and it doesn't work at all screen sizes. So let's fix this up a little bit and make it a little bit more usable. Uh, but I'd love to know what you think about just this idea in general. Please leave a comment down below to say like, no, Kevin, there's nothing wrong with uh, containers and wrappers. We should just keep using those. Everybody knows them. Or does this make sense where you just have a main grid and we're going to see how we can deal with the navigation and other elements as well. Um, but you know, we set up a content grid, throw stuff in there. If we need it to be wider, I just say that it's wider. I love this so very much. I think it's so much easier. Like, oh, this is full width and this is a breakout and this full width and not having to, like a section with a background full width and I put content in there and I don't need another layer to wrap stuff. Why did I not start doing this sooner? I don't know, but maybe you disagree and I would like to know if you do big rant there or rambling or whatever. <laughs> um, so let's keep on going. 
uh, and, and actually get this set up a little bit nicer. So to do that, what we're gonna do is some locally scoped custom properties. And so I'm gonna come in uh, on these. I'm just gonna do them as regular ones. I'm not gonna do it with the, the underscore and stuff just because I don't feel like explaining it. If you've seen other videos where I've done that and you liked it, do it however you wanna do it. Um, but here we're just gonna do locally scoped custom properties because they only apply to my content grid. And the first one I'm gonna do is gonna be called padding inline. And we're just gonna say uh, two rem. And that's gonna be like making sure that our content never touches the edges. Cause right now we have that locked in at hundred pixels, which is a little bit much <laughs> in my opinion. The next one we're gonna do is a content max width. Uh, and this is completely up to you. What's the widest you wanna let stuff get to. Uh, in this case, I was using 900 pixels. Let's try something like 70 CH or something. Um, we could play with this number. And then we also wanna come in with a breakout max width. And let's say that this one's gonna be 85 CH. Um, and so with that set up, what we're going to do is sort of play around with these, these numbers that we have in here. And it gets a little bit weird, but it shouldn't be too bad. But to do it, I am gonna break these over multiple lines just to make it, and again, this is where I don't find it's necessarily more readable uh, in a sense, but I'm gonna sort of do it like this. I'm not a huge fan of content start. This one I'm gonna put like that. And then we can do, um, so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of, of putting it like this, but I didn't really know a better way and to get it all to fit on the screen. So here, what we're gonna do, and this is going to be for these two ones at the extremes. So we might as well select both of these right here. I'm gonna use a min max. And the minimum I wanna do is my padding inline. So we're gonna do our var padding inline. And then I'm gonna do a one FR. And now next up, we're not gonna look at what this is doing because it's gonna sort of break everything. Um, but next up actually for the breakout, let's remove that for now. So we're gonna make those ones zero uh, and we'll bring the breakout back in after. Uh, but what we're gonna do here in the middle is we're gonna use a min function, not a min max, but just a min because I want it to use the smaller of two different values to figure out which one to use. Uh, and min's good for this type of thing. So we're gonna say minimum between 100% minus padding of uh, var padding inline star two. And uh, CSS, if you're using a min or max or clamp, you don't have to use a calc, so this will work. It also does use order of operations, but what I'm gonna do is just set it up like that, just to make it explicit that we're doing the multiplication first. Uh, the reason I'm saying 100% minus this times two is 100% will be the full width of the parent. So it's saying 100% minus the space that we've set aside on the two edges. And that means that maybe this is gonna work at this stage. Let's go take a look. You can see, there we go. We have the, the two rem of padding on the two sides. And at one point, well, it's always gonna be like that because <laughs> this is the only value we've given it. So this is just the size it is. It's 100% minus the padding on the two sides. Just to show you, if I said 100%, what would happen uh, is we would get some horizontal scrolling because we're having the 100% and we have these two columns that are causing the overflow after that. So we don't want those to be there. So we have that. Now though, I'm gonna su supply a second value, which is my var content max width. So this is saying use the smaller between these two. So my content max width is six, or 70 CH. So if we're smaller than 70 CH, it's going to use this one right here. But if we get larger than that, it's going to stop at 670 CH in width because that is smaller than the 100% minus the padding on the two sides. So choose whichever is smaller, meaning we're getting this that we have here right now. Uh, I asked for opinions on this, and I know people right now are gonna be saying, Kevin, this is ridiculous. We can just do a container or wrapper. It's a million times easier. Just bear with me, we'll get to the end. I do want your honest opinion. Uh, to me, this is not over engineering, even though there is another way to do it, just because I find this could potentially be much more versatile. Uh, so it's, it's finding that balance and there's things we can do with this that are more difficult or, you know, it's not about implementation, it's about use of. So that is a big part of it, in my opinion, when we're creating these types of things. Uh, so that we, that's working now. <laughs> the only problem is we, our breakout is no longer working because I'm pretty sure one of those paragraphs at the top, there we go, has the breakout on it. For the breakout, it's going to be a little bit strange uh, in how we're gonna set this up. And I have the zero there and I have the zero here. And what we're going to do for both of those is actually, you know what, we could do this. <laughs> Let's say breakout, we'll say uh, size. Um, and the reason I'm putting this on its own line 
the this is the max width that we're going to have but that means we need to do a bit of math because we actually need to take that so var uh, my breakout max width and we're going to divide uh, take that and divide the whole thing by two which does mean i need to use a calc and the reason i want to divide it by two is because we need half of the breakout on one side and another half of the breakout on the other side so now i can just come and say that this is and maybe this could be worth putting into another one or this whole thing, this min could be worth making a custom property. I'm not sure. Um, but we have the breakout there. So that means here and down over here, we can come in with my var uh, breakout size, hit save. And if we did that properly, we have now a breakout that is completely broken. Uh, so I did something wrong. <laughs> Uh, and I know what I did wrong is I'm just saying 85 CH, but we don't want it to be 85 CH divided by two. Uh, we also <laughs> want to say uh, minus my var uh, content max width divided by two, right? Uh, so let's take all of that. Again, order of operations is coming into play here. So we need to wrap that up before we do our division or it would do this divided by two anyway. Um, so we're saying that if it's a breakout area, the total width is 85. So we want half of that extra on both sides, but we need to subtract the 70 from that and then divide that by two to know how big to make each one of the side columns. And a, a change of wardrobe because I made a mistake and luckily one of my patrons caught it uh, before we published to YouTube since they get early access to my videos. So if you do want early access to them, you can join the Patreon. It is linked down below and it helps support my channel. But uh, what I did here is I set up this breakout area and it's working. The problem is it will force things to be a little bit too wide. And so let's just uh, take a look and I'd planned for this and just completely forgot it. So if I open up my dev tools, uh, everything's working fine. But when we get to these smaller sizes, as you can see, we get crazy overflow, weird stuff going on. Uh, and basically the reason that's happening is if I turn on my grid, the breakout area has a fixed size on it and we want that to be able to shrink. And that's really easy to do. We sort of already set that up a little bit, uh, when we were setting up our min function here for the content area to be able to shrink. Uh, in this case, it's actually a little bit easier and we'll do both of these breakouts at the same time where I can set up a min max for them and we'll open the min max here and close it all the way over there. And basically we want to say the smallest they can get is zero <laughs> and then they're able to grow to the breakout size. So if I make that change and I hit save now, if I come over, we've gotten rid of all the overflow and you can see that that breakout column that's here and here they'll max out at a certain size, but then as it gets smaller and it starts running out of room, it's able to shrink. And just because of the way that the grid's working with this being the min function, those will shrink first. They'll eventually get to zero and then the breakout content will just line up with the regular content for your other views. So it works really nice and easily. There's no like nothing to worry about with media queries or anything. It just, it just functions, which is fantastic. Uh, and yeah, it definitely is quite a bit of setup to get all this working. <laughs> if you take a look at this, you might go, Kevin, this is kind of nuts when I could just do a container with a max width and in some auto margins on the sides. And that works really well too. Uh, I just find the versatility of this is really nice because I set this up and you know, if I'm going project to project, I just take this copy paste and I'm just changing this. People don't have to come across the code and make changes to here. You're just making updates to this. And if you want something that's even more robust, you could definitely check out Ryan's article uh, because in there he looks at setting up the full, the content, the pop out and the feature as well. Uh, so he has some examples here where you can see we have different widths that we break out to. The only difference he does in his article, I believe is his full doesn't turn into another grid that then gets that control over being inside of there. Uh, which is part of the reason I really love this, but I, I really do find it versatile. And like I said, I love being able just to, let's just say here, I want to wrap this paragraph in a section that has the class of BG primary. So we get that blue background and it just so happens to also be a full width section, uh, which is basically what we're, what we're usually doing with our sections, right? Like a lot of the time we open a section, close a section, we have to put the wrapper in there. I could just open it, close it, say it's full width and like magic, it's full width with the content being in the container type, you know, pseudo container, whatever we want to call it. Uh, it just works. And for me, the ease of use here and the ease of use of updating it once we've created it over, I think might be a valid reason to actually use this instead of maybe the simplicity of what a regular container is. 
or a wrapper that you might have in a normal project, but I would really love to know what you think. So please leave comments down below and tell me that this is way over engineered or that you absolutely love it or maybe something in between. Also, don't forget to check out Orion's article here as well as his blog. It's a really good blog. I often link to it in my newsletter as well. Uh, check out small.css. It's a fantastic resource. It's not just this. There's a whole bunch of different little code snippets of different stuff you can sort of go in and steal, responsive padding and lots of other really good things in here. And if you like nerding out on CSS in general, do also check out Steph's newsletter. It's one of the few newsletters that I am subscribed to and people are always asking me how I keep up with how, you know, the quick pace of CSS these days and all the new stuff coming out. And Steph's newsletter is one of those resources that I do use. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome who are web on demand, Andrew, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.